Python tutorial Capital Asset Pricing Model. Asset pricing models consist of estimating asset expected return through its risk premium linear relationship with factors portfolios expected risk premiums and macroeconomic factors. This topic is part of investment portfolio analysis with Python Curse. Feel free to take a look at Curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of the video. An example of asset pricing model is the Capital Asset Pricing Model or CAPM, which consists of estimating asset expected return through its risk premium linear relationship with market's expected risk premium. For full reference, I recommend that you read Jack Trainer, William Sharp, John Lindner, Jan Mosing, and Craig French, The Trainer Capital Asset Pricing Model, published in the Journal of Investment Management in 2003. As a formula, the expected asset return is equal to a risk free rate of return plus the asset beta, which corresponds to the linear relationship between asset and market risk premium, multiplied by the expected market return minus the risk-free rate of return. Beta coefficient consists of estimating asset market systematic risk through their linear relationship between asset and market risk premiums. As a formula, Asset beta coefficient is equal to, within the numerator we have the covariance between asset and market risk premiums divided by the variance of market risk premium. Jensen's alpha consists of estimating asset expected excess return through the difference between asset expected return and its theoretically estimated expected return. For full reference I recommend that you read Michael Jensen, The Performance of Mutual Funds in the Period from 1945 to 1964, published in the Journal of Finance in 1968. As a formula, Jensen's alpha for the asset is equal to the expected asset return minus the theoretically estimated expected return through the capital asset pricing model. Great. So let's go into Python PyCharm IDE so that we can study capital asset pricing model with greater detail. Excellent. So here we are within Python PyCharm IDE. The first step within the tutorial is to import the packages. So we're going to import NumPy SMP, Pandas SPD. From stats models, we're going to import regression linear model as LM and tools.tools .tools as CT for the constant or intercept for that linear model. The next step is to do our data reading for the creation of our data variable, which we are going to name returns, which is equal to PD or pandas.read underscore CSV, the path to the data file, which is within that data directory, and that data file named CAPM, single factor model data.txt, as a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values index column as date, and we parse those dates as true. So before continuing with the capital asset pricing model calculation, let's go into that corresponding data file. So we double click on it, and here we have, as mentioned, a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values, and they are the following. Three columns of data, date as the first column, SPY minus RF, and MK T minus RF as the third column. So first we have dates with a monthly frequency from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the end of 2016, 10 years of data or 120 observations for each time series. SPY minus RF corresponds to the asset risk premium. The corresponding asset is SPY ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the Standard & Poor's 500 index. Therefore, its corresponding risk premium is the difference between its monthly arithmetic return minus that corresponding month's risk-free rate of return. And the market risk premium corresponds to the market portfolio monthly arithmetic return minus that corresponding month 
risk-free rate of return. So going back into the code file, the next step is we're going to do that capital asset pricing model single factor model calculation. For that, we need to add to our returns variable, the one we just created above with dot LOC. We are going to select within brackets, semicolons before the comma, meaning all the rows, and we're going to add a new column. This new column is going to be named CT, where we are going to add the constant or intercept for our linear model regression, which is going to be equal to CT dot add underscore constant for those returns. And once we have the data ready, we'll proceed to do the calculation of that linear regression. We're going to name it CAPM, and it's going to be equal to LM, that's the linear model feature from stats model, dot OLS, or ordinary least scores calculation, and within it we have, first of all, the dependent or explained variable as the column with the asset risk premium, and then we have comma, the independent or explanatory variables. In this case, we have a single independent or explanatory variable, which is the market risk premium, but within returns, we're also adding the column of that constant or intercept, which is CT, and as previously mentioned, the market risk premium, because we have a linear regression with just one independent or explanatory variable, but also with a constant or intercept, comma has a constant equals to boolean and we fit this regression. So then we proceed to print the results. Blank space, then the capital asset pricing model linear regression summary, another blank space, and the summary is being printed with dot summary open and close parenthesis. And we're going to compare the results specifically for the beta coefficient with the alternative calculation we do here. First a blank space and then we print CAPM beta, and we do so with the formula described within the slides. So notice that the result, we're going to round it, so we use NumPy rounded for four decimal places, and the calculation is done. First, within the numerator, we have NumPy.COB, or we're calculating the covariance between asset and market risk premiums. So that's why we have those two columns being selected from our returns variable we created previously. And we're going to divide that result by numpy.var or the variance of the corresponding returns and the column with the market risk premium. Notice that we're including within this variance calculation DDOF equals to 1, meaning that the delta of the degrees of freedom within the denominator is going to be equal to 1. Therefore, we're going to be calculating a sample type of variance. And something very important, the covariance calculation is done as a matrix. So we are concerned about either the first row, second column position, or the second row, first column. So specifically here within the code, we have first row, second column. With Python notation, as we can see here within brackets, is position 0, 1. 0 because that's the first row, 1 because that corresponds to the second column. So let's go ahead and run the code file. So right here we have the code file name, we just click on run. That opens the running console and it's going to go ahead and do the calculations and print the result. Perfect. So let's go within the console and scroll first to the beginning. So there we have the capital asset pricing model, linear regression summary. Notice this is OLS or ordinary least square regression results. And we have as dependent variable, the corresponding asset risk premium. And then we have the estimation of those two coefficients. The first one, CT constant or intercept, that corresponds to Jensen's alpha. The expected excess return, and this is with a monthly frequency, and the expected excess return on top of the exposure of the asset to the corresponding market risk premium factor. Then we have the beta coefficient, this is the market beta, as the measure of systematic risk, and we have its corresponding estimation as this market beta. So let's go ahead and scroll to the bottom, and then we have the second, an alternative calculation for the capital asset pricing model beta, and as we can see, this corresponding result, this is the one calculated with the formula with the covariance within the numerator and the variance within the denominator, is the same estimation result 
as the one we observed within the linear model regression. An important thing to mention about this covariance divided by variance formula calculation is that it can only be used with that corresponding model with a single factor, which is the case of this capital asset pricing model. Excellent. So let's go back into our slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of trading or investment advice. Please pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, with this we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.